This is Bob Latchford, and you're watching Toffee TV. Welcome to Toffee TV. It's the final word. Swansea nil, Everton nil. Very, very lucky to have Ronnie Goodless on it this week. Ex Everton and now Radio Merseyside. Expert. That's all I'm going to say, Ron. Expert. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. Um, obviously, coming off the back of a good win, Ron, against Chelsea. Fantastic win last week. Uh, quite confident for this game. Um, and in the end, I'm a little bit disappointed by it, to be honest. I'm similar to Ped. Um, you, know, you go down there in normal circumstances, you'd be happy with a point down yeah. at Swansea. But I actually thought they were there for the taking on uh, on Saturday. I thought maybe if Roberto was a little bit more forthright in his team selection, uh, the longer the game went on, I thought, uh, will he make changes? Mm. Uh, and I think by the time he got Delafeo on, it, it proved that Taylor and Norton weren't very good fullbacks. <laughs> um, you know, I'd have had them on a long area. I think I'd have started with at least one. Um, and he proved, as I say, he's got that ability to go past people mm. but get crosses in. Um, maybe disappointed um, sort of with Lukaku uh, as, as well. Yeah. You, know, you know, maybe he could have brought him off or Naismith or whoever. You know, just make it a little change a little bit earlier. But I thought we, we showed that um, when you have wide players on, we've got them and we had three on the bench again. But if you're not going to start with them, you know, this is where managers live and die by it because by the end of the season, we'll be saying, if only. Mm. You know, we've got to play catch up with the two points we dropped against Watford. You know, fabulous results against Chelsea, no two ways about that. But this is where we've got to kick on. You know, Roberto's got to take chances and he's got to. You know, we've got five wide players at the club and hasn't started with one all season. So there's certain matches that you can do and cannot. But I thought Saturday would have been the one. I mean, I know with Nasey, you'd have to play him after a really good hat-trick, but you know, there's times when you've just got to say, well, you know, can we put the wide player on you know, from the start? Not, not wait to see how the match goes, but uh, I think Delafeo has, has proved uh, he can go past people. And as I say, Saturday, like yourself, uh, I'm, I'm more disappointed mm. that we never never got that win and, and three points and, and two valuable points dropped. We were talking last week, weren't we, Baz, about the, the full-backs positions were going to be the big thing, wasn't it, for us? Because... Didn't want to break up that partnership, you know. We wanted Stones and Jags to start the game, and I thought, I thought, you know, Brown coming in had a great game. I thought he was a bit shaky for the first fifteen minutes. Like you, you'd understand that, but I thought he had a great game in the end. Well, it, oh sorry, buddy. Go on, mate. You, you know, early on, um, Montero could see the ability that he's got, mm. and he's the one I, I said, you know, forget about Gomez. Um, you know, Montero's the one who supplies it. And the longer the game went on, as you say, first 15 minutes he went past them a couple of times, but uh, no major danger. But then I thought second half, you know, Montero was virtually, how many yeah. kicks did he get? So it shows you how well the kid done. And, uh, you know, good on Roberto again for, for playing him. You know, you're quite right, he could have switched it around, brought Mori in and put John Stones at right back. But uh, I thought he had a lot of confidence in the kid and he, and he proved, uh, you know, in the game that he played. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's, a, he's a very good defender, isn't he, Browning? I think obviously you're not going to get the same... Um, going forward is what Seamus gives us because obviously he hasn't got that same ability but he's very quick mm. very big he's a big lad isn't yeah. he you know you're gonna you come up against him as a winger you, you're thinking hang on he can run I'm not going to be able to push him off the ball he's quite strong and he did he grew into the game like I say he, he probably could have done with someone with a little bit more ability in front of him and mm -hmm. I'm not just having a pop of Coney but I mean someone who's going to take the ball off him and go on because I think Browning even though he, he tries to overlap He's gonna do his best work in our half. He's gonna do shut them, you know, shutting players down, being strong in a tackle, and then giving it to a winger and saying, "Come on, go at them." Well, similar to what you said about Coney, <clears throat> um, you know, Coney's is done better than he has, and we know he's had injury problems. But again, that's not good for the club. You turn around and say, "Well, look, we've got players there who play in the right field position." Coney, uh, uh, you know, did one good cross against Southampton. You know, you can't knock him. That was a fabulous game. But again, he, he, you're not gonna get. You know, consistent service off, mm -hmm. and when you've got a wide player, it's that balance I always go back to. You've yeah. got to have balance in, in it, and as you said over over Tyus Brown, and if you've got a wide player, there, you just give him it, and then again you can overlap, but you can help. But if you've got a natural wide player, he will help out. And again, Corny will fill in. He he'd, he'd be good from corners. He'll get defensive headers away, but it's taking away a threat in that last third, mm -hmm. which which again cost us. You know, on a good day, Lukaku could have scored four. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that way if you bring him off, you know, you're a bad player, I'm going to sell yeah, you next yeah. week. That's the old thing about management. And yeah. similar with Stephen Naismith scored a, a you know, really good hat-trick. 
But it, it doesn't mean that for the rest of the season you, he's got to be nailed on all yeah, the time. Yeah. That, that's what a manager does. He, he changes people around. As I say, with five wingers at the club, one of them hasn't started. And uh, well, one won't be starting for a while because Morales has got a three game ban. <laughs> yeah, but but again, Delafeo has showed the Barnsley game and that on Saturday that given the ball, he's capable of creating something. And, and games like that, when there's not a lot of chances, I mean, uh, and Swansea, as I say, we're not the best. That's the time you say, right, get him on or play him. Oh, and, and, and yeah, exactly, let, let, let's have a go. I think what it showed for me as well, I mean, we mentioned him wingers. I mean, I would have played Lennon all day there instead oh, of all Lennon, yeah. Because he, he's. he's I think with Delafeu, I mean, he did track back when he come on, but he, he's not renowned for defending. Yeah. I think you, I think what I'm liking so far with the season is we do look solid. Another clean sheet away from home, you know, that's that's three now. We do look really solid, and I don't know if, if you can go into games being that wide open, especially with a young fullback. Well, just to interrupt you there, that's why you should do it because we are looking solid. We got the two best yeah. centre halves in the league. End of yeah. story. Jags and, and Stones, superb. You got Seamus, although he didn't play on Saturday, back to his best. Galloway has been a revelation yeah, since the kids come yeah. in. So you've got a solid back four. You've got two sitting midfield players in Barry and, and McCarthy. Mm. Why can't you play a wide player? So again, it's having this confidence yeah, yeah. in the ability oh, no. of, of your team. I want, your I'd have a wide player. And, yeah, but as you've said with Lennon, Lennon will work yeah, hard. So if you've got, you got a question mark against Delafeu, yeah. you say, well, we've got a wide player yeah. who will work hard in away games. So again, it might be that question mark if you're coming up against, you know, Difficult teams like Swansea maybe have a lot of possession, and and you think, is he going to track back? But you start saying, I say, well, we've got another player there who can slot in, and that'll bring the likes of Brown because Galloway again from the first time he got forward against Chelsea, he got that cross in. Mm. He's saying now, which he was a bit wary as yeah. the game's gone because he's young, he's, he's it's a learning curve for him. Get your defensive priorities right. But he's thought to himself, yeah, I think I'll go forward. Mm. Now since he scored that goal. Again, he's come up against Pedro and all these players. What what a, a really good baptism it is mm. for him. But he's got that confidence to go forward. And again, if you've got a wide player in front of you, but you can sort it out, just say, just give him me or support him. I'll sort it out. You know, that's what you've got to do. And that's what we've got to start to look at because I still think uh, this league is anybody's. Yeah. And that fourth position, I'm telling you now, anyone can get there. I think you know, when you've got Leicester and West Ham up there, and West Ham's won, at, you know, at Liverpool, Man City, and Arsenal. You know, th this is where the game of manager has, has got to turn out now and again and take a chance and say, look, we've got to I, be I, more positive. I think I'm with you. I think I would have started with Lennon mm. because little things like he scored there last year and yeah. that gets people. Yeah, yeah. That's sitting. Yeah. Yeah. Last yeah. week, I thought he was great. He last was week, when he yeah. come on, yeah. he was just keeping it nice and simple, yeah. and he will give you that. And also, the, the other reason is, is you know, you mentioned Lukaku there. You look at the bench and you think there's no one who can come on for him. Kone can be that person who comes on for Lukaku. No matter what you think about Kone, he will he can come on. But if he's already played sixty minutes on the wing and then yeah. you say to him, Now go up front for the last half an hour, he's not gonna be able to do it. So he he's got to I think that's there's gotta be a bit a bit more savvy management there mm. and think, well actually we need another striker today, not on the pitch, oh. on the bench. Yeah, yeah, but but as you said over Kone. I think he's lost a yard since his injury. Yeah, I really definitely. do. He, he finished John Eisinger's career. He bullied him. It was like a, a seasoned professional yeah. against a youth player. I can't see that in Coney again. You know, I'd love to see it, but you can see that yard's not there. And as you said, playing in a wide position, it's a hard position. People think it's easy. Play there. Because again, mm -hmm. you mightn't have the ball for 10, 15 minutes. And when you do get it, you've got to do something with it. Yeah, so yeah. again, you know, you're right to over Leonard, his experience. We've looked at him. But it's something, um, I don't know whether it, it, it ever come into Roberto's head to say, yeah, I'm going to play. See, if you've got five players there, you've got one. Uh, if you're not going to play wingers, he'll never play two, because obviously if he's not going to play yeah. one, when are they ever going to play? Yeah. And, and you start looking at Swansea, they're the type, we should be going there saying, we, we, let's have a right go with these. Now again, I can understand if you go to Arsenal, possession, you know, Chelsea or maybe Man United, you have got to do it accordingly. But teams like that, you turn around and say, you know, we're, we're capable of coming here and winning. And what a message after the Chelsea game. Swansea must have been saying, I, I, you know, I hope we get a point to you today. Because yeah. the way Monk, I don't know what game Monk watched, but he thought it was a great game and, and he played well. But, you know, that's the, with Everton beating Chelsea and then coming mm. to town and then saying, well, we've got a point off a, off a good side. But I still think we look back at this in, in maybe months' time and thinking there's two yeah, points. Yeah, I think so. I think what, one of the things that's really disappointed me, I'm just looking at the stats now, we had 17 shots and only two of them were on target. 
Mm. And that to me is a, a you know a massive indictment of where how why we didn't win this game. Mm. I mean, Lukaku had a couple of really good chances. You know, Galloway's had a decent chance. Uh, what are you shaking your head at? But come Lukaku. on, talk about Lukaku. Just Lukaku. I mean, look, we can talk. He's, he costs twenty eight million pound. Mm. Okay, and people will be screaming at the thing, going, oh, "He's brilliant. He's amazing. He's one of the best in Europe and everything else." And that's fine, mm. but these moments define centre forwards. Your centre forward is there to get you important goals. He was slipped in with his left with his right foot early on in the first half, got played on the angle, deflected over the bar, he should have done better with. The two in the second half, Ross has put, I think it was Ross slipped them in through the legs, and that's just, normally mm. he just he, he just passes them in Rom. He's missed that one, he's missed the one that comes out the air. You know, he has two goals at it, and then the one Delafe he puts across, that's yeah. a, he should be turning that in. We need him. He's, he's our yeah. main centre yeah. forward. We need him to take one. You can't have four, miss four and go. I've seen people would tweet me going, just one of them days, you know, look at City, we were just unlucky. I don't know whether we were unlucky. I don't know whether we were unlucky. I mm. think it's bad finishing. I think we come away from Spurs going, we nearly played very well yeah. today at Tottenham, but we didn't look like we were going to lose. We didn't look like we were going to win. A point was okay. Saturday, two points dropped because we wasted excellent opportunities. So saying that, is that the manager's fault, Ronnie, for not going out and buying another centre forward? Because you look at that, and you know, I know what he thinks, <laughs> but you look at that and you think it might have just been one of those days for Rom. And Rom even come out himself and said, last December when he wasn't having a good time and he got benched for the Newcastle game and he seen Coney playing up front, that was the kick up the backside that he needed to get him going. And I, I, you know, we've already mentioned about Kone being on the pitch, and you look at the bench and you think there's no one there, there's no one who can possibly replace him. And he's, I, that to me is a big failing. You've got, I mean, I, I look at the other shower and I just think, all right, they're not very good, but they've got like four strikers. Like they might be four great strikers, but they've got four strikers. If one's not doing it, then someone else is going to have the chance to do it. That's not there for us. You know, I totally agree with you. We, 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 we needed one, and we've known for a long time. That's the disappointing thing. You don't just say the last week up to the transfer window. Oh, we need a striker. Mm. We've been looking for one. Got like saying since the end of last season, you know, even before that, and again, big question mark over Coney. You know, you mm. can't keep waiting for the lad who's injury prone. You know, sorry for the lads. Obviously, yeah. you know, you can't legislate for injuries. It, you know, it happens. But as a football club, you can't keep saying we've got to wait for him. He'll come good. He'll come good. You've got to go out there and put pressure on everyone else. And then if he is fit and he can do a job, fantastic. But you've, you've got to go out and buy someone, and, and, and that's where we're sure. Do you think there might be some thinking, Baz, that maybe he, he, Coney's now in a position where he's getting fitter and stronger, that it's almost like, you know, I'm giving him time on the pitch to get fitter and stronger, and now, and then, like, you know, maybe next week he's going to say, right, now he can play up front and we can put one of those wingers on the right. I'd love to think that was that was his way of thinking. I think he, I think he thinks the strength aspect with Coney, and I think he looks at it and... He might think back to Newcastle at home last year when the two of them played early well in tandem and we won 3 0 away at QPR. But I just think you're taking, I think it's unfair on Coney to be honest with you because I think what we're doing is we're, we're shoehorning him out on the right wing. He's getting up and down and working hard, but he's a centre forward. Centre forwards want to score goals. He wants to score for Everton, shoving him out wide. He's not doing one or the other. He's yeah. not in the middle to put the ball in the net. And he's not really doing what someone like Aaron Lennon would yeah. do for us. So I think if you said to Lukaku, Lukaku is a, is a really, really good centre forward and he scores a lot of goals for Everton, that's great. But you still, as any centre forward, as any player, you need. And we criticised Tim Howard for this last year. Yeah, yeah. You've got to be able to look at that bench and think, hang on, if I'm not doing it, he wants my place yeah. here. And it doesn't matter who you are, if you haven't got that threat, you're going to go in. And I'm not saying Lukaku. Attitude dropped Saturday and he was just lazy and he didn't want to score. Of course, he wants to score every time he plays. He's that kind of person. Yeah, but I still think it keeps you sharp when you look over there and you think he's ready to come on. Like you said, when he got dropped last year, he came back. I just think on Saturday, he started overthinking things at Southampton, which is the only Premier League game he scored in, by the way. That day, the header was instinctive, wasn't it, off the Coney Cross? And his finish with the, you know, was a lovely ball in. He just swept it in without him thinking. I think he's better when he doesn't have to think about it wrong. And I think Saturday, we need him. If it, we get another game like West Brom away Monday night, when he gets that half chance, he's got to take it for us. He's got to, and that's what we're paying for. He's our hope. He's our main centre forward. We haven't got two on the bench who we can go, mm. well, let's rest him now because yeah. we've got Charlie Austin sat there and he'll get you 15. 
we haven't. We look at the bench. We're hoping a kid from Uruguay who's banged a couple in for the 21s might be able to be a, a bit of a Solskjaer and come off the bench with 15 to go. That will let us down. That's why I was really, really disappointed in that game because it was there. They offered nothing, Swansea. They offered nothing and they were there for the taking and we haven't. But just playing Coney on the right, you see, is it just to give him game time? You know, yeah. minutes on the pitch? Well, it's wrong. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, and as a player, you know, if you're a right back and someone comes in and says, right, you're playing uh, right side midfield today, you go, why? <laughs> you know, you, you know, playing, you know, where the strength. And as you said, you, the best to get out of him, you know, you've seen Lukaku when Naismith comes on, you know, to, to, it helps strikers and then and then goals hopefully will come. Mm-hmm. But, but I just think that threat, and as you say, you know you're knocked on all the time uh, on the team sheet because no one else has put you under pressure. And this this is, you know, for... It was glaring on Saturday, as as I say. It, it really was. We, we should have beat them. And we said we were we were talking about it last week when we were saying about um, his his coach come out and basically said he's an undeveloped striker, but when, but because he scores so many goals, yeah, it's been, it's, it's almost like by his career's been bypassed in that way. But Saturday sort of showed those failings. Really, you know, if he's not scoring goals, you think well, yeah. But similar to to Barry before, I fear it is is when. Take Lukaku off and then, and then maybe play Kone up there. Mm-hmm. But if you had someone else on the bench, you could change it again. You're not saying to Lukaku, you would have not his finish because we're yeah. taking it off. It's just not your day to day, mate. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you know, you've had four chances, you're having it at the back of the net, off you go and move. But again, you look at the bench and you think, we've got three three wingers, and then and then you yeah. look at their bench, they're pulling them. And as you yeah. said before, every club, you know, in the Premier League for me, has got four strikers. Yeah. You know, but, but, what? Well, exactly. Aaron Barrow, well, even the kid he played, he went right, wide right to centre Well, they ball. brought Gomez off, yeah, so Gomez he's our equivalent to Lukaku. Yeah. What, what difference does it make? Monk's gone, you know, he's not going to score today. I'll get someone else off. And Barrow actually went, went past the Galloway, got a good cross in, where they nearly scored. Yeah. So, again, change it. It puts doubt into the, the opposition's head. If, he, if he's bringing him on, have we got to change our system? But again, play to our strengths. And, and I think in, in Lennon, again, you know, we signed him. Um, you know, you've got... Uh, Delafeu they're out full time they're not lone players they're at the club is, is played them and as I said uh, you know with uh, Naismith he, you know he never got a game he's come on scored a hat but if you, do, if you don't change things around never you know you, well you're never going to know why big positive obviously for me anyways that back four at the moment and bringing you know bringing Gallo- Brown and Gain Galloway on left I mean four four, four English players yeah, yeah. and nobody's Nobody's saying anything about it. Yeah. No left. one's saying anything about well, it. Well, I was going to say, I was waiting for Sky and, yeah. and Matthew got, Davis to say never you've got two, you got, you know, you got, what, four under 22-year-old English players playing in yeah. a Premier League game and no one's making any noise about it. Yeah. All, all we ever get is people complaining about there's not enough English players, where's the next... And we've got them four and no one's bat- battered an eyelid. Well, this is why you're on here, you see, Peds, because you mentioned it. <laughs> all, all the other so-called big uh, terrestrial ones and all the rest don't make it. No, but you're right. I, I said it on Saturday with them three. You know, Jag's OK, he'll be coming on with a Zimmer frame compared to the rest of them. But he's only 33. And yeah. as you say, they're, they're in the 20s. So when you look at them, you think, the back four. And that's what I'm saying about taking a chance. Yeah. That back four, different class, really is. And again, Tim Howard is, is, has come again. Yeah. And then you start looking at Barry McCarthy, that's where you can start saying, look, let, let them worry about us. We, we, we've got attacking players here, and, and let's have a right go with them. But that back four, as you say, is, is, has been absolutely superb. And I don't think Roberto Martinez can ask for any more off them. All it is is mm-hmm. the other final third where we've really got to start yeah. taking chances. Tim Howard's 112 clean sheet as well. Yeah, he had, a, he had a good game again. Can't, can't criticise. Nope. <laughs> we shouldn't even be talking about it. If we can't criticise, we shouldn't even talk about it. But, but I just thought about Stones is just... Stones and Jags. I mean, we, this is what we were saying last week. We were saying you cannot take Stones out of that centre-back spot and move him no, to the right no, back. No, no, no. You've no. got to bring someone else in. I know a lot of people will say, no, just put Mori in it. No, no. Think with your head. You I know. thought he. I, I honestly thought he would put Murray there though because he's paid the money. I, no, I but they, they've dove sail yeah, now. They, they, oh, they're, they're, they're the perfect, perfect combination. They, they fed off each other. Um, Jags okay, not the best passer in the world, but he's he's toughening himself up. John Stones. He, he never had the physique last season, yeah. but he's really muscled out. He's got time and he's space actually, though, on the book. Oh, no, yeah, Because yeah. of all those Evertonians no. that are chasing after him and, <laughs> and go to his house and make him... Fu- <laughs> make him make him himself. But, it, but if you look at that too, and then, as I said, with Jags, it, it, it's a perfect combination. And, um, you know, I, I think the, well, the European Championships oh, yeah. will, will be them too. We've got that perfect combination at the back. And we've, we seem to have that defensive area, right? Mm. But the rest of the team isn't balanced. 
Hmm? Because we've got Gareth Barry who's been fantastic this Yeah, he's come, so come again himself, yeah. Ross Barkley, who's been unreal. Yeah. He was again on Saturday fantastic. Well, just don't talk too much about him because I want to talk a bit more about okay. him. So. I'm just, yeah, I'm yeah, just saying fantastic. James McCarthy for me in that three has been the biggest yeah. disappointment this season. Hmm. And then we've got Stephen Naismith, who I've, I've said to Ronnie before, I've said to you, I think he's better off up with Lukaku because I think he's... Or off the bench. But off the bench if he's going to play left. <laughs> But if you're going to play him as a cent- out and yeah. out centre forward, put it this way, you wouldn't miss four sitters. No, no, he wouldn't, no. He wouldn't. You know what I mean? So we've got to be clever and think, well, hang on, if Nacy's not going to be a wide left player, then maybe he's the kid who comes off the bench and you take Rom off, like he did the Spurs. Yeah, yeah. Take him off, put him up there, because he likes to get yeah, in yeah. the face, doesn't he, and give you a bit Nacy. <laughs> but that's, but that's, that's what I'm saying, need. but that's with that extra strike you see. Again, he, there's a threat. If you think you're, you're picked every week and your first name's on the team, mm-hmm. she's... Psychologically, you just say yeah, you know. I mean? yeah, but, yeah. but but I think what you said before over uh, when Coley played, it was a kick up the backside mm-hmm. to him. You just say, look, there's other players here who can take your place. If you're not performing, you're not slotting out of four chances, and, yeah. and it can happen. Um, you know, you, you're off, and yeah. someone else is going to do it. And, and that's where I think the disappointing thing what we're, we're talking about when coming away from Swansea is that final third for the threat, playing with wit, and and you know hitting teams and and. It, it's sort of you know when players are there as I said before is, is that you've got to play them you see you know if, if the five wingers are there you'd be knocking on the door saying I never started against Watford I never started against Swansea when am I ever going to get in this team you know great results against Chelsea and again yeah. you've got to play a certain way and clinical out of, of Stephen Naismith absolutely different class to be honest and uh, you sort of look at that and say well the next week though well sit in the bench mate because we're going to play this way go this and again way. as long as you communicate with yeah. the players they all know what's happening. You're not knocking on the door on a Monday morning saying, I can't believe this. I've just, yeah, going back, you might mention Morales later. But why is he signing a three year contract? Mm. He's thinking, I'm going to stay here. Then you're not going to play him. Because yeah. on his day, he's a winner and he can score goals. Mm-hmm. And, and, and my big disappointment in the game, what I mentioned before, is if you're not going to play me, mate, why? Because it's that final third, we do need a player of, of that ability. And again, I think uh, I, I'm not. You know, going to defend them over the tackle. You know, poor. You know, tackle. But again, it's a frustration. Mm. Again, they're coming on with two minutes to go. Yeah. Right. So Morales, come. Let's stick to the Morales theme. Uh, obviously, you know, Ron just mentioned why did he sign a three-year contract? I still don't know why he signed a three-year contract. But everyone was. I mean, if you were on, I was sitting there on Twitter looking at all you can see. Ron is Morales. Where's Morales? Where's Morales? Who I wouldn't have brought on anyway. I would have brought on Aaron Lennon because I just. Didn't see what, what Morales could bring to it. But, you know, Baz, he brings him on. And then he does that. And Morales just didn't look bothered to me. Didn't look bothered. Didn't oh. look bothered he made the tackle. Just looked like... We were talking about last week about his face when we scored the third goal last week. He had a cob on when we scored. And to me, he just didn't look like he was that bothered. Well, I think I think when you're a player, you sat on that bench, you know, you're probably constantly assessing. Don't forget, it. he'll turn up every week expecting to play. He could have gone elsewhere in the summer. Albeit Why do you think he signed that contract? Because I just think... Uh, lack of interest? Lack of interest of where he probably wanted to go. I think if the Champions League yeah. club would have come in and wanted to meet have gone. I think he's probably looked and thought, I like it here, because he does like it here. Good side and all that, and I'll get in. And fair enough, we'll see what happens. You know, next Loads summer. of Belgiums in the area. Exactly, and all that. Um, <laughs> Not playing and just picking your wages <laughs> exactly. up at the end of the month. <laughs> but, <laughs> any jobs going? But I think... <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yeah, join the kids in Plymouth. Um, but I think sitting there as a player, you know, you're looking at you're obviously looking at people who are in your mm. position. He probably looked at Coney and thought he's a centre forward playing on the wing. You know, I can play that position. And as the game's going on and you start to see a bit of movements on the bench, he's probably thought, right, I'm coming on here now, and it's Delafe who gets on mm. before him. So he's wound up, and then the manager goes as we're approaching the 89th minute. Yeah, like you're going on now, and you're sitting there thinking. Uh, why haven't you put me on 20 minutes ago? He's given me injury time to do yeah. something. He's gone on, he's frustrated, he's probably wound up, and he likes to leave his foot in. He's seen it, he's got yeah, yeah. this little snide bit in him where he gets a cob on and he doesn't mind leaving some on the player. And sometimes, if the game's be, you're in a game and that's happening and you're being kicked, you leave one on someone to get them back. You kind of look at it as a fan and go, well, that's been coming, that. Mm. That wasn't, yeah. that was pure frustration about not playing and he's seen the opportunity to do the lad he's done and people can say it's a harsh yeah, red all you want if it had been Barrow on Morales we'd have been screaming yeah. blue man I thought it was, it was a red I thought it was a shock and he's over the top and he's sent off and okay he might not look bothered I mean I don't know what you want him to do but he, he's been 
sent off. He's probably wound up. He's walked past the manager straight down the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. And he, you know, he's out for three games now, and, and it's stupid because he'd have started at Reading, and that would have been that could have been possibly an opportunity for him to get in there, get us a couple of goals, and make himself. Um, undroppable if you like for the next game but now he's going to sit on the bench for three well sit in the stands for three games yeah but after you sign a three year contract you think the manager and the player have done it right and you're right I think it is a lack of incest from the clubs he wants to go to Mm. so he said something nice in the paper but you think right now you're here for three years so the manager you're thinking they've sorted it but all of a sudden good goal against Barnsley yeah and again you know what you've got to do is turn around and say well right you know I'm here Mm. play me so I think it was a slap in the face to him. You know, it's happened a couple of times when, you know, he's been warming up and it, it just hasn't happened. Um, great results against Chelsea. So you're thinking Swansea. And then when you're getting going down the pecking order and you've just, you know, you're international, Belgium, European Championships, you know, it, it is, you know, because all you want to do as a professional footballer is play. You know, the money's quite nice as well, but you want to play football. And I think it was, I mean, I, I noticed that what you're saying about the goal as well and things like that. Because again, you're not getting in the team. No. But go and see the manager and have a real, you know, bit of a pop at him and then just say, I'm going to perform here. You know, whether he's not doing it in training or whatever. But the only thing you can do is when you get that chance is come on and perform. And he did against Barnsley, scored a a really good goal, got us back in the game. And then you're thinking, I should be playing in the next game. Now, I don't know whether he communicated, he's saying, look, I'm playing this way because Chelsea. So no one can argue after that yeah, result, you can't sit down and say, why you never pay me, I can't believe it. But the next game, you think, what's happened? Now, the red card, as you say, tomorrow against Redden, he could have scored a couple of goals, really back on blob, and say, I'm available for the West Brom game. Mm. Now, three games, he's going to be out. It's going to get longer. If De La Feu does it or Lennon, he's down the pecking order again. And I just can't get my head around it. Why, why all of a sudden, you sign a three-year contract, you're not going to play him. And then January comes around, mm. is he going to get off? Or... or have the old uh, titty lip on him. You know, is he going to be, uh, you know, spit the dummy out? I don't want to play. And again, you know, we mentioned the striker. You, you can't have uh, unsettled players at the club, and and ones where he would be on good money, and and you think, well, uh, I'm not getting the game. So uh, it's uh, it, it's poor for him, but I think it's poor for supporters as well because a lot, you know, down the years he's, he's proved he's got it. You know, he's you know, the lad can play. Yeah, yeah. But whether it's an attitude thing uh, and you start putting fingers and maybe a bit just of it's weird because as he got older, there seems to be more of a lack of consistency, which yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. He, he, you know, when he first come, you can understand that. But in the last year or so, there's well, he's like he's lost that hunger to, yeah, to, to perform all the time. What's his best position? And that's, that's but he it. never but shows his best position. No, but I'm he? saying no, but he's got it. He's could he be the number ten? That well, he, he is could, lacking. He so we, we don't know the conversation he's had with Roberto yeah. Martinez. He might have mentioned that, and he's gone no. But you feel like saying, "Well, I'm better than what you've got. What you've tried. What, what you've tried. Why don't, don't you forget? Play he's it? got a good touch. He can yes. go by players. He can go right or left. He's got a good dig on him. We've seen that. He's got loads of ability. Why hasn't he done it? Where's his best position? People might say it's on the left. My only question side. mark against him is, is his attitude. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've got that ability, there's lads in the team and we can go through certain players mm-hmm. who give everything and haven't got half his ability. Mm-hmm. And when you've got it, if you turn around and say, well, you can't be bothered to either train hard all week to perform or when or yeah. I play it, it's like easy Ozzy. If I'm going to play or I'm not. And, I'm it's right. that's it. and the weird one is for me is that he's, he's always on the bench for Belgium as well. So he hasn't nailed that down either. So you mm. would think there's an extra drive. This this European Championship is coming up now. It's probably going to be his peak tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he's sitting on the bench and you think, this is up to you to pull this yeah. out. You, We've seen what you can do. I mean, we've seen last year at West Ham when he came off the bench. It was absolutely amazing in that yeah. club game. Yeah. And you just think that's the standard you Well, set. you can go through Ped certain games yeah. where he was outstanding. And, and again, you know, when you've got nil-nils, you want someone like him to, to do that. Yeah. Just you know, turn the lock and he's in. And it's it's a, is it is well, you know let's, is let's be his honest, character form and injury time. No, no, that's oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. With, exactly. no, 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 we're only saying minutes, yeah, like. we're only saying for that one game. But I'm yeah. saying overall. But I, I totally agree. Yeah, with yeah. If someone knocks you and says like start running up and down, you, you know maybe he's gone over the top because he was stretching. Um, <laughs> but but you know for, to, to, you know get, go on and get me a goal yeah. and and then he come on and even as you say when he was walking off. He didn't look that bothered, as if to say, man. well, it, it's happened, I've got a red, I'll, I'll go and get a bath get now, a and, I'm, 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 and I'm off me pop. Oh, so, big question mark against him, but but also the manager. Why, why have they, in such a short time, mm. as if fell apart? And, and you know, because, uh, you know, if you stand a three-year contract at Everton Football Club, you should be happy yeah, days. And then you just think, all I want to do is, is play me. Let's finish on a positive. Ross Barkley, another 
just amazing performance, especially the second half. He just looks like um, he looks like since since he scored that goal we talked about last week at, at Watford, his performances have just gone through the roof. He seems to I've got the balance right between when to take the ball, when to pass the ball, when to run with the ball. It all seems to be falling into place. He's taking people on at the right places at the right time. And I just think he's been magnificent so far this season. Well, I said it towards the end of last year. That this is going to be his make or break this year. You know, is Ross going to kick on or isn't he? And you're totally right. He's he's kicked on. I mean, the lad love watching him, giving the ball in that last third. I mean, he jinked that many times. I think I had to pay to get back in, <laughs> uh, and then he, he ended up crossing it, and that should have been a goal. So we've got a lot of things. I still think is only the only thing with him. He, he can shoot more often. Mm, yeah. He's got a great shot on both feet. And when he tries to check not with his all left the time, <laughs> no, no, but when, he, but when he checks all the time, he, you know, yeah. take a chance. Yeah, and yeah, how many definitely. times you see a little deflection or it'll yeah. go into someone else's yeah. path. But as you say, second half, absolutely superb. And, you know, it can only get sort of better with him. But he's got that confidence that I think now the penny's dropped with him. He's a player. You, you know, you know ju- just give, you know, he, he, he can run with the ball, yeah. which, which is going out of the game. You, yeah. you know, give him the ball, uh, his strength, ev- everything's there for him. That's, and, what, and, and it's, that's what I just, I'm amazed by how, wants to be. Big, how, how big and yeah. strong he is. I, just, I think he's gone up, he's definitely gone up. And, and it isn't all negative because it's a good point. It's just the fact that yeah. it should have been three. That's no, why no, it down. that's it. But in terms of Ross, different class. Yeah. Now, he's up, he's, to me, he's gone up another level. He can play alongside a defensive mm-hmm. midfielder in there because you're right now he's starting to what we're seeing from him which we all said he had but he didn't show enough us when he's running at people that little through to put the ball mm-hmm. through the legs for Lukaku he's played a couple of those little we had the one last week to Naismith when he slipped him in for the third goal once that what's happening with Ross now is decision making is getting better and better and, and I tell better. you and that to Mount Morales that for me is the difference it almost feels like Ross this season took up he's seen that we were after the number 10 and has almost said I can be that number ten, and I started doing those things, and and his overall game's got got better, and I think that's the difference between Morales and Ross Barkley. But is he? He can be the ten, but he's almost playing a bit further back, isn't he? And I think because he's playing ten yards further yeah. back, it's allowing him that space to break into. I think the only the only thing Roberto's got to get right is either side of Ron, mm. and you can either go with the two wingers rather than having two centre forwards playing either side. Get two natural wingers either side of Lukaku. You've got them three sitting across behind them you're in business and I think that's the only thing we need to get right we get that right then who knows what we can do see the shame it's a big game tomorrow where obviously Morales is missing but we've got to get through that but then it's going to be interesting who he picks against West Brom because I think we can go there and, and beat West Brom you know it'll be difficult if you always say you know Premier League games away for a moment difficult but you know similar with the players we've got to hear teams the likes of Ross mm. you know the more you've got in your side the, be- yeah. the better it'll be but I think you can look back you know a great start to the season Ron, finally, you've got some nights coming up. You've got one this week. This Friday, Ped. Uh, Alan Ball remembered. DVD's there. Picture but there. Uh, that's going to be... Uh, well, that's going to be raffle. We're yeah, going to put in the man. auction, but I think paying a few hundred quid will be a bit over the top. So yeah. we're doing that as the raffle, which yeah. is great. Jimmy Ball's coming along, guest speaker. We've got Bales and the usual crew coming along. And, uh, Bales just turns up anyway. Well, he, he, well we, we put him like a, a cardboard cut out <laughs> now. I, I, I just take him everywhere. Slot, <laughs> slot him there. He's happy. Um, but it's great to see Jimmy. Jimmy's going to come. I'm going to say a few words as well. But it's a it's a great night, and a, you know we've got a DVD done of Action Abali. I've even got him scoring against Liverpool, which has got nothing to do when he's with Arsenal. But we've threw that on. But uh, some really it's exclusive anyway. The DVD that we've got done. So Jimmy will love that. We've got a few family things of him as well. So. Uh, Talk about you know when we used to win things and had world class players and <laughs> all that. We used to win things, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, I hope it's not too long, Ped. Mm. That's why we've we've got to talk. But anyway, um, tomorrow we'll see. Uh, get, getting that last sixteen and onwards and upwards. But we've got that. That's at the Winslow, um, and then we've got the twenty seventh of November, which is ten years of our charity held through sports, which we've got John Arson is, is kindly coming along, and we've got Mick Miller is doing the um, obviously the comedian, and then we've got the Brown Bone Award on the night. Which Pat and Rochelle Labone are come with, they're kind of going to present that, which is the Corinthian. Then we've got the Alan Ball, Ball of Fire Award, which we're mm-hmm. inviting his daughters, Keely and Mandy, and Jimmy's coming along. And then again, a lot of things happening. Mm-hmm. But uh, it'd be great if you can support that. We've, yeah. we've had inquiries already, which is lovely. Um, but it's, as I say, great cause, great charity. And uh, you know, thank all the support down the years that we've had of, uh, of many people. Brilliant. All the information is going to be. Down here, down here, it's all going to be all the information for those dudes. Don't forget, if you've got any comments about the show or the draw at Swansea, 
in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe on Toffee TV as well. It's at Toffee TV One on Twitter. Thanks to Ronnie for joining us, and we'll be back soon on Toffee TV.